In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. At first glance, the Gospel reading for today seems kind of disjointed. First, there is a lesson on how to pray, followed by a parable about a man going to ask a friend for bread to feed his guests, and then later something about eggs and scorpions. Kind of weird. But like I always say, look for the weird (laughs) in Scripture. (laughs) Pay attention. However, if we look at the reading the second time, we will see that it is all in one piece. The point of today's reading is threefold. Pray together, pray boldly, and God will give you more than you could ever ask or imagine. God blesses the persistence of his holy ones. What's really interesting when you look at the words of the Lord's Prayer is that we are instructed to pray in the imperative. No groveling. We are to tell God what we want all the world to know about the holiness of his very name. We were to tell him that we want him to assert himself in his sovereignty in the coming of his kingdom and through the world, and that we want the world, through God's actions, to recognize God as the Father of all. It's a tall order. God, you be God, the capital G, so all the world can see. We are to tell God to give us what we need for each day, not more, not less. We are to tell God to forgive our sins. Now, here Jesus gets a little wily. He's such a teacher. and reminds them, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, right? Lastly, we are to tell God not to keep trials on us, because life is hard enough, right? So Jesus says, Ask God, or tell God, not to treat you like he treated Job. (laughs) Okay, God? (laughs) Fair enough. Now, in Matthew's account, the prayer is more fleshed out, much like what we pray each time we gather, gather as a community. But the core remains the same. We are to pray these simple imperative statements together before God as Christians have been doing since the earliest days of the church. Lord, feed us, forgive us, and make your kingdom known to all the world through justice and mercy for the poor, the feeding and clothing of your children, God. Now, in many teachings of Jesus, the focus is on what we are to do. In this, Jesus focuses what it is that God does for us when we ask. And then Jesus offers the parable of the persistent, or you could say, obnoxious neighbor. Now, suppose you are that guy who would bang on your neighbor's door to wake him up in the middle of the night because you have guests coming and did not manage your daily bread well enough to provide for hospitality. You just try that. Your neighbor is not happy with you, banging on the door and waking up his children, no less. And yet you persist. So eventually he gets out of bread, out of bed, and gives you his bread. It's just a weird story that makes it look like Jesus is recommending that we behave obnoxiously toward our neighbor. Is he saying we get the bread not because of the neighborliness of the one we jerked out of bed, but because of our persistence? I mean, being that guy seems to go against all the other things that Jesus has said. Like, take the lowest seat, put others first, etc. Jesus prioritizes the meek. But the last time I checked, the meek do not knock down doors at all hours looking for food to feed their friends. Or do they? Because the thing is, is heavenly priorities and earthly priorities do not look the same. The key to this passage is that the persistent neighbor is not asking on his behalf. That would be an earthly priority. He is asking for food to feed his guests. A heavenly priority. A 
a heavenly humility. Now consider this in light of the Lord's Prayer. When we ask for our daily bread and daily forgiveness, we are asking to be equipped so that we may go out into the world ready to serve. When we come together as a community, we come to be equipped together. <coughs> Do you know that saying, God doesn't call the equipped? He equips the called? We are praying to be equipped. We look around the world and we say, holy cow, I cannot even begin to think how to fix this. So we come to God. And it is exciting, if you think about it, that God expects us to pray in this imperative voice. He expects us to stand there and make demands. But what he accept, expects of us is that we are persistently righteous, not grabby. There's much work to do in the fields of the kingdom of God. And when we prioritize the way God would prioritize, we come to him first to be strengthened for the work, rather than trying to do the work we are given to do without his help. You all know how that goes. And so the neighbor whom you bother in the night will give you three loaves you asked for. But when you ask God for the same, he will give you so much more than you could ever ask or imagine. And that is the meaning of these statements. If the human father would not give his child a scorpion rather than an egg, how much greater will the heavenly father's gift be to his children? Like, notice the hyperbole, right? Egg and scorpion. The father in the story, the human father, is evil. This, these are the exaggerated ways in which Jesus is trying to convey his meaning, that we can't even imagine what is waiting for us when we ask, because God wants our asking. <coughs> I'm of the, of the opinion that we under-ask on a regular basis. Where is our persistence? Where is that focused asking and searching and knocking on the behalf of others that God is waiting for us to begin to do? <coughs> now, the last thing about today's reading is it just grows in intensity. We are now down to scorpions and snakes, right? And then Jesus escalates it one more time. And the ultimate gift that he's going to give us when we just ask for a piece of bread is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who infuses our work, who gives us the creativity, who gives us the energy to continue doing things even when we don't see the point. It's the Holy Spirit who keeps that smile on our face. So when we pray first and put Jesus first in our lives, there is just no telling what the Holy Spirit might do in our families, in our places of work, our communities, and in the world. As we all pray here today, know that we are being equipped through our prayer and through the sacramental life of the church to be God's hands and feet in the world, not someday, but in about 20 minutes. Amen.